Good day, viewers, and welcome to your favorite program, The Conversation, coming to you live from TV360 here in Lagos, Nigeria. My name is Nelson Ekujumi, and I have here in the studio with me today, uh, Peter Okwara, a public affairs analyst. Peter, you are welcome to the program today. Thank you for having me. Yes, uh, today we want to quickly look at the Supreme Court judgment of um, October 26, if I'm right. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we have seen that the Supreme Court has upheld unanimously, the seven justices of the Supreme Court upheld the unanimous judgment by the five justices of the Presidential Election Petition Tribunal. And um, for me, except if somebody wants to be, you know, untruthful to him or him or herself, uh, the judgment is very, very clear. Uh, the Supreme Court had made it clear once again that the IRF portal is not a coalition center. I recollect that um, during the elections in 2020, during the general elections in 2023, February and March, you know, INEC promised prior to the election that the results would be uploaded to the server. And because INEC did not, was unable to upload the results due to what it called technical glitches and Anybody who was on the field that they would clearly attest to the fact that there were glitches, really. Because as I was, a I was an election observer, an INEC, you know, uh, accredited observer, and we could not assess any of INEC portal, even to identify people's uh, polling unit. Because once you click the, your voter's card number, your polling station number on, on the portal, it will show you where your polling station should be. But we're unable to do that on election day. And lo and behold, I, the courts, as I said, the fact that results were not uploaded to the IRF did not in any way tamper with elections that were conducted at the polling station, of which results were entered into a form ECAT signed by the polling agents and the party agents present, as well as the security agencies, before those results were transferred to the World Registration Area Coalition Center, where it was collated. From there, it went to the local government coalition center. From the local government coalition center, it went to the state, as well as to the uh, national coalition center. So for me, is it a case of people being mischievous or people being ignorant? When you know that whatever has happened at every point in the electoral process, there are stakeholders who were present there. And that was why even at the, at the Supreme Court, if you listen to the judgment, because I was opportune to listen to it all through, the justices said even the, part, the litigants who said they won the election, they didn't present any evidence that this was a party and candidate that said he won the election. And the election was conducted in 176,606 polling stations that not one resource sheet was presented to counter whatever result INEC declared. That INEC declared result based on the available fact that if you say you have won, then produce your evidence. We saw uh, articles... Uh, appeal, how all the seven justices said the, 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 the appeal was vexatious, was, uh, was vague, was nebulous. You said you won everywhere. There's no everywhere in electoral art. Everywhere has a name. Police station, what? We saw Peter Obi's uh, appeal. In less than 120 seconds, that appeal was thrown into the dustbin. But just yesterday, we saw Alaji Atiku Abaka Attacking judiciary, blackmailing judiciary, blackmailing INEC. And for me, that was a low for Elijah too. I, I expected something better from somebody who was a former vice president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Elijah Atuku Abaka literally yesterday denigrated that office of the Nigerian people that he once held, as well as assaulted our democracy. And for me, that was a no-no. So is it that these people don't understand what the electoral arts is, 
or they are trying to incite. Because yesterday, Elijah Atuko Abaka was even inciting. If you listen to, the, to his press briefing, he was not saying anything new. He was, only, he was just attacking the judiciary, attacking INE. So where do we draw the line for responsible conduct by political office seekers? Um, the whole thing borders on pure mischief. To me, as a participant in the election, the um, February 25th, 25th yeah. 2023 20, presidential election, I still record this as one of the best we have had in Nigeria. I still insist on that. There's no doubt about that. And now, the facts but, are but, there. But, but, but paradoxically, it is the most maligned because people prepared. Pre people, uh, if we don't win, we insist and we shout that this is uh, it, no election. It, it was compromised. Mind you, nobody raised any serious complaint until the collation of the presidential election at the, at the National Collection Center Certain. in Abuja, yeah. when Dino Melai started his play his acting. Drama. Yeah. So, at the polling unit, it was well and good. At the collection center, the world, it the was well and good. At the state collection, it was well and good. When it now came to national collection, and what is the ground? The ground, they did not up, uh, upload results uh, real time to INEC portal. That's the IREF, which had been settled there. This is a viewing center. It is not even a collection center. Mm. The, 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 the uh, hard fact in an election is the result of your polling, of the polling units on from EC8A. If you want to prove electoral, that's where you prove the electoral uh, uh, manipulations yeah. or whatever. So it was pure mischief, you know. And uh, the presidential election petition court on September 6th proved it to the whole world in a well researched, well unassailable judgment. Prove it to the whole world that this is pure mischief. Because mm. the opposition, as in Atiku and P2B, just went window shopping, they shop for any kind of irrelevance and at their appeal. Instead of proving any fraud if, uh, or any malfeasance <laughs> in the election, they either have this 25% Abuja, this and this, this and that. These are immaterial issues and the court says so. Now the Supreme Court on September 26th says so. On October 26th. October 26th, sorry. Now the uh, antics of Atiku. Atiku is behaving like a Bull in a china shop. He is just, you know, trying to act based on his emotions. And what spurred that emotion? Desperation to rule Nigeria, which has spent 30 years. Desperation to rule Nigeria that started in 1993 up to date is 30 years. Now he has been frustrated. Atiku is Nigeria's most prolific loser, election loser we have had. So he is behaving, you know, irrationally to show his uh, desperation to show the frustration he had been meeting in this ambition so you should look but as far as nigerians are concerned i think he's a spent political force whatever he's doing the antics he's doing, these are antics we saw him going to chicago which he had not visited that's a united states we had not visited except when he was smuggled by the former senate president salaki yeah. to america he hadn't visited america since he left why hadn't he visited America? Because he has pending serious corruption cases, case yes. that has been in th that has where he has been indicted by the FBI. Yeah. You know, waiting for him there. So he all these antics. But what I'm trying to say, he is preparing for 2023. 27. On, uh, sorry, 2027. But what the surprise that awaits him is that he will meet with more frustration in 2027 than he met in 2023. Atiku is not acting like a statesman. I don't think he's one. If you read the testimonial his boss, Obasanjo, Obasanjo wrote about wrote him, about him. Yeah. you don't know that this man is like, like I say, he's a bull in a china shop. He wants to just destroy the thing maximally because his ambition had not been met. And, but I bet you at the end of the day, he will end more frustrated. That is my take on that. You see, for me, I, I listened to him yesterday. I watched the press briefing because I got the notice on Sunday. And I expected, you know, Irresponsible conduct. Irresponsible. A ha, statesman has, like he, has he exhibited any responsible conduct since all these ambitions started? I expect that, that is what you were asking. I wasn't like expecting anything more from what he did yesterday. 
and debate me maybe in a matter of which you will call another world press conference. No, you know, I think we should be expecting Peter B to. Yeah, uh, yeah Peter B is a copycat now. He's an Atiku psychic. He will call his own. But I'm talking about Atiku. I think we call another world press conference very soon to talk of irrelevances. When, yeah. you know, remember when his uh, expedition to Chicago failed? Yes. He called the world press conference. Yes. On a matter he has at the Supreme the Court. Courts. You know, he won't call the world. And he, even the he, Supreme Court judgment yeah, won the before that. the judgment, Before the judgment, he called another world press conference. You know, this kind of antics, you cannot allow it for a man that is nearing the age of... O octogenarian. Uh, yeah, he, no, he's a... Uh, uh, yeah, an octogenarian. An octogenarian, an octogenarian by 2027. So all these, antics, has... all these antics will not avail him. Nobody can impeach the judgment of both the PEPC and the Supreme Court. Absolutely. No same person. And those it was judgment were, Those judgments were unassailable. Atiku knew that those judgments were unassailable. Peter B knew that those judgments were unassailable, but they keep playing this plan, thinking that it will give them political capital. Things don't work that way, and <laughs> well, it's not going to happen. Well, we leave that to the Nigerian people to judge, but, you know, if you ask me, uh, the conduct, the comments, you know, of uh, Alaji Atuku Abaka yesterday, uh, as I speak to you, I'm still traumatized that... That means the, you were expecting something no, more from you know, him. You know, you know hmm. I, for him to have held the position of a vice president, I think the Islanders didn't tutor him well. He needs to be tutored. You know, <laughs> it was a denigration of that office. That was he, a pain He had me. done more to denigrate that office. As I said, the testimonial of his boss in ah. that office is enough for him. Well, thank you very much, uh, Peter, for this uh, submission on this first stanza of the program. We'll go thank on a you. short break. We'll be right back. Please continue to stay tuned to the conversation coming to you from TV360 here in Lagos, Nigeria. We'll be right back. Please stay tuned. <laughs> 